Okay, this is obviously a spirit level. And when I put it on my bench like that, you can see my bench is nice and flat. Brilliant. And if I lift one end, then the bubble goes up. Or did it? I'll let you think about that for a while. All right, well, either answer is correct, really. But my point here is, did the bubble go up? Or did the water in this little tube go down and causing the lack of water to move upwards? Well, hopefully that sparked your interest, but we're not here to talk about spirit levels. We are here to talk about electron versus conventional current flow. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I've seen in the comments to my videos and other people's videos that some people have a, a real hang up about the use of conventional current flow. In other words, we say that the, the current flows from the positive to the negative terminal. Uh, but of course, we all know that the electrons actually flow and they flow from the negative to the positive terminal. So this spirit level idea is hopefully just a different way of looking at it and thinking about it. And I'm going to go through it in this video. So given we're talking about electrons, then we do actually need to delve into the atomic structure of the material that the electricity is flowing through. So this is the periodic table and from something like this angle here to the left is virtually all metals and metals generally are good conductors of electricity. Not all of these are, but many of them are. And one that we tend to use the most for electrical circuits is the copper atom represented by the symbol Cu. And if we quickly delve into the structure of the copper atom, then at the heart you have the nucleus. And that consists of 29 protons, shown in red here, and 34 neutrons, shown in black. And around the nucleus there are electrons, and they are distributed in these shells. This is the first shell, and that has two electrons. The second shell has eight. The third shell has 18. And the outer shell, well, that has one giving us a total of 29 electrons. And we say that protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. And neutrons are said to have no charge because they are neutral. Now, given we've got 29 protons positively charged and 29 electrons, then this atom is balanced and it's said to have no charge. So the atom as a whole is neutral. But in atoms like this, where in the outer shell you've only got one or very few electrons, then this electron is free to move around because it's only very loosely bound to the nucleus. So if this electron drifted away from the atom, then the balance changes. We've now got 29 protons still, but the number of electrons as a whole has, has reduced. We've got 28. So overall, this atom is now positively charged. And on the flip side, well, if we gained another electron in this outer shell, then there's now 29 protons and 30 electrons. So overall, this is now negatively charged. And atoms that do have one or very few electrons on the outer shell and those being free to move around, that's what gives it the property of being a good conductor of electricity. Now let's simplify the illustration of this atom. We don't need to show all of this stuff. As long as we know we've got a balance between the number of protons and number of electrons and that the outer shell primarily consists of one electron. So at the heart you've got the nucleus and this very outer shell, well that's called the valence shell. And it's this valence shell that gives the atom its kind of key properties. So let's simplify it just down to that. So we've got the nucleus here and we just showed a valence shell. The nucleus being positively charged and this valence shell containing, of course, one electron is negatively charged. And it's this electron that's free to move around. We can ignore the 28 other electrons. It's just a given that they are there. Now, if we look at this piece of copper wire, this would be made up of many, many copper atoms. Now, the scale of this is very disproportionate. In fact, if this was a two millimeter cable and we took a very fine slither of that, say 25 micrometers or 0.025 millimeters, then you would find roughly 6.24 times 10 to the 18 free electrons in that little tiny slither of copper there. And expanded out, well, that's that. So that's basically one coulomb rounded up. So in this piece of copper wire here, there's almost an unimaginable number of free electrons just floating around, kind of randomly, but evenly. But when you apply an electrical charge in a circuit like this, so here's a battery, 
This battery kind of acts like a pump, if you like, pushing out electrons from this side and sucking in electrons this side, which you can visualize something like this. The electrons are indeed flowing from the negative to the positive terminal. And that's what people call the electron current flow, which basically means when you have a circuit like this with a supply here, then these electrons, which were previously just floating around randomly, actually flow in the same direction towards the positive terminal. Well, let's just look at this a different way then. And to do that, I'm going to zoom into these three atoms here just to make it simple to follow what I mean. So to start out with, each of these atoms are neutral. They've got the same amount of negative electrons as they have positive protons. And if this electron, for example, moved away from that atom, then as we've seen, that atom becomes positively charged. It's got more protons than it has electrons. And that might have moved away because you've got a supply source down here and it's seen the positive terminal and kind of get drawn into that positive terminal. And over here, you have got fresh electrons coming in. So that's now gone positive. And we just do away with these ends to say they're neutral. We can see they're neutral. But next, this electron is now attracted to this atom because it's positive. So it moves across and that one moves out even further. And you saw there that the positive charge moved across to the left. And then the same happens again and fresh electrons are coming in from this side. So yes, the electrons, the particles moving from left to right, but also you can see in between there is also the positive charge moving from right to left. And it's a bit like, well, the bubble did go up when I tilted one side, but also the water went down. So which is it that moved? It doesn't matter. The water went down, causing the air in that, in that tube to lift up. Uh, so you can look at it either way and it doesn't really matter. So yes, the electrons flow from the negative to the positive terminal in that direction, but the charge, the positive charge, also flows around this direction from the positive terminal to the negative. And I find that much easier to get your head around and it's much easier to do the maths when you have to. Electron current flow, except for some extreme circumstances, is completely unnecessary. So there you go. Hopefully that's giving you a different way to think about electron and conventional current flow. Now, a lot of the illustrations I've used in this presentation are purely to get the point across, and I'm only using PowerPoint here, so I can't do the fancy stuff. And I know some people are going to say, oh, it doesn't look like that. Well, to me, it doesn't matter. I'm purely trying to get the point across, and hopefully I did that. So if you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. And if you haven't done so already, then please click subscribe too. All right, catch you later.